Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. So the other day I asked for some requests on what you guys would like to see and one of the requests was a Yaga deck. Now this deck doesn't actually have Yaga. I decided after playtesting Yaga it wasn't as consistent as I thought it would be and with one of the games that I played I played Yaga for one point and that was just the turning point for me and I decided to change the deck up entirely. The same thing goes with She Who Knows, it was just too frequently answered that it wasn't getting the payoff that I was looking for, especially for 13 provisions, it just didn't seem good enough in the game right now, so I felt like that also needed to be removed. So what I came up with instead was a deck that doesn't rely on Sabbath quite as much. We do have a few cards like the Bloody Mistress and the two Witch Apprentices that do need Sabbath in order to get the payoff boosts. These are really good engines, but I feel like we can get these things alive at least, you know, because we do have some pretty good point slams to get us there, and these, once they get going, should keep us there. So that felt good enough for me, but these would be like a longer round play, so we want to have some safer, shorter round plays too, so beyond that, it's not Sabbath oriented, it's just point slam, and then we have some really good control stuff if we need to play a little bit more non-interactive later on in the game. So this, I would say, has a little bit more control than what you might see normally with relics. We've got Karathi Heatwave to obviously banish scenario or one of their tallest units or their most important unit. The Iroquax indirectly is a punish to them because it'll pull out their highest provision card when we play this on melee and it'll brick like the key play that the opponent has going on potentially later game so i've been liking the payoff from that quite a bit we've got toad prince which is great point slam for us but it's also going to be taking away one of the opponent's engines and then of course a little bit more graveyard punish with the bleeding effigy here being able to banish a card from their grave boost one of our units by the same amount um, of its base power right so i'm thinking about like the reckless flurry matchup for example when we're going to be getting great swords and good things like that but also if we do have bloody mistress we can go and we can just basically punish something a bit taller i've been seeing a lot of self wound lately so a melusine would be a really good trade with a bleeding, uh, bleeding effigy an alternative to this could be squirrel but i i feel like it's just fine the way it is here and having another tall punish being a spores is good in addition to the heat wave. Everyone's running Ring of Favor right now, so it just makes sense to kind of have something to inexpensively answer that while maintaining heat wave for later game. So the real point of this deck here is to just start filling a row in order to maintain Sabbath or to achieve Sabbath, which is essentially 25 points on one given row at the end of your turn, right? So once we get the Sabbath, then we'll get the payoffs from Bloody Mistress, and we'll get the payoffs from Witch Apprentice, and then you can start forgetting about Sabbath. All we have to do from there is just maintain it. In round one, we have really good tempo swings from playing inexpensive bronze cards. Normally, you want to separate the pairs. So if I'm looking at the Griffin, Incubus, Gansian, Witch Apprentice, like these types of things, you want to have maybe one in hand and you want to have one in deck in the first round because later on in the game we're going to have an option to bring um, something out of our deck with Mamuna, right? And we want to be flexible with what that option is because this will boost self by the one we have in the grave and then it'll pull out the other one. So more than often you're going to find a target for Mamuna is going to be something like the Griffin. It's going to be something like the Gansian, or it could very well be Self Eater or Witch Apprentice. Normally, I don't do like an Incubus because I try not to even play these early on. I find that these are better like a round two, round three play. So these, I'll just hard mulligan them both back. Maybe keep one Griffin, maybe keep one Gansian, maybe keep one Witch Apprentice. You see what I mean? And then that way we have really suitable options for that there. We want to have enough Relics in hand round one so that if we are splitting self eaters and we're looking to swarm with these and get a big swarm payoff we have enough relics to play to actually proc these and get them all to boost so keep that in mind as well a good card or bunch of cards to have in a round when we're playing self eaters would be the lesser witch and the mushy truffle because we get a few plays there we get great payoff there so Again, we are carried in this deck by the bronzes, surprisingly, and then the golds are just really good complementary cards to help it out. So this deck is 
not so bad on blue coin i find on blue coin it's one of those things where you might spend a little bit too much too fast because you're looking to tempo pass on the opponent they can usually smell it and they'll pass with seven cards where we have six so then it makes bleeding a little bit more difficult so keep that in mind i really like red coin with this deck because when the opponent's just fighting for round control in round one, we can just really squeeze and try and extract some of their good key combo pieces and potentially win on even with cards like Ring of Favor. So something to think about there. But again, it plays on both sides of the coin. I think I have examples of both in today's games. So that's pretty much it. It's not an overly difficult deck to play. It's not a very expensive deck to craft. So if you're new to the game, you're looking for something strong, something that can take you to pro rank, something that's fun and something that's easy, I definitely recommend giving this a try. If you're in pro rank and you want to climb a little bit, by all means, this should be able to do that for you there. I don't think relics in general are in a place where they're like a tier one meta list or anything like that. That. However, I do believe that if you can play anything very well, you have more of an advantage over your opponent that might just be looking at something they saw online and trying it out for the first time. So if you master it, you should be able to climb quite well with it. So that's pretty much it. I got four games today with live commentary for reference so you can see how the deck plays out for yourself. And I have a big list of decks that you guys recommended that I give a try and I make guides on over the next week. So I'm going to be getting through these as many as I can over the next few days. And for that reason, I'll probably just do about four games per deck just so I can do more decks in shorter time frame. But uh, if there's one that I really, really love, maybe I'll do a couple extra games. But uh, this has been my favorite Relics deck that I've played in a couple months at least, a couple patches. I think that this just runs very smoothly. Um, again, being able to bring stuff back from Grave is really cool with the Incubus. I didn't use these as much in 10.1, 10.2. I introduced one into my deck in 10.3, but now I'm just sold on them. I think that they're great. They can really mess up your opponent's uh, carryover plays, and they can really just bring out, you know, something that's not so great for your opponent. Let's say they, they have something engraved that's just like two or three base power. We pull out a nine for the same price. It's kind of ridiculous if you think about it that way, especially in a short round three. So I'm convinced and uh, looking forward to playing more of this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. But uh, for now, let's get into the games. All right, so we got Reckless Flurry up here. Now, I find this is a very difficult matchup because they have the ability to really abuse the coin and obviously the damage is going to prevent us from getting Sabbath as easily, so we have to keep that one in mind. I think Effigy can go back for now just because it feels like a later game play. We want to split them up and have like seconds in deck and Potentially the same thing with the cell feeder too. This is not bad. So I think we're supposed to just go and take Griffin. And then maybe we go and take the Adara next. Just so that we can get some value there. I wasn't expecting something like that. This means it might be Lippy, right? The whole Casino Lippy, Shuperdea type thing. I think we can actually go and play something like that. Seems about right. I'm going to say that we're going to boost this up, just so that if they're going to use leader, they have to use a couple. We hope that they actually remove one of them. Okay.
I think we just play on here with this. I think one of our big win conditions would be looking for the Iroquax. Like, that could actually be just really good. Okay. We'll go for the split. This is actually pretty nice here. Added synergy, so we'll try and take off with this. And it's getting close to the point where we have to just pass. We'll just go ahead and split them up a little bit. 29, I think we can actually go and play that too. That would have been a good pass for us there. I just don't think it's one of those things where I want to give them round control. We can keep both of these. I think Peller can go for now. And I think Spores can probably go. This would be a four. I'm not against bleeding with Fakusha, I just... Or not Fakusha, but uh, Mamuna. If it's shoot for resilience, I'll be upset because uh, we just tucked away the Peller, right? That's huge. I don't know how much I like long round against this though, you know? I think we're allowed to just jam this here. And then, you know, if we need to play into it a little bit, we could just sandwich a couple of these in the middle. Yeah, it's a little slow tempo play here. That gets us to 25, perfect. That'll probably be the Melusine. I believe we're supposed to play just once again. And then that's probably where we have to call it, right? Actually, perfect Toad Prince at the same time. Because we get the Thrive on this, we get the extra two points on this because we delay the turn a bit more. 
And they're going pretty expensive here too. I think if we have Effigy for the Melusine, we should be doing pretty well with that. We take a five back. We take a five back. Share the night. Share the love. That's got to be as far as we'll go. Still up by about 20 points. Yeah. They might have Restore in hand. Oh, they just... They can't do it, okay. So we got uh, Force of Nature coming up here, and we do go first. Now, it could be Kashi, right? Could be relics, it could be who knows. This leader is fairly universal. I think we put back effigy in round one. I think we can put back teleportation in round one. And then we gotta put back one of the incubus. I like these for later game, at least round two. Now Previously, I would have used a Darren earlier. I don't know if that's the play. I think we want to save it for later. I'm just going to try and jam some points. We could do that. We could do self eaters and then a couple things like that. I don't mind taking Iroquax in round one. I mean, looking at it here, we'd be pulling out the Bloody Mistress, but if it takes away something equal from them, it could be good. So it's basically relics, right? What we can do, though, is uh, on the split, we can eat it, which is not a bad idea. At the same time, the apprentice is probably something you want to consume. Yeah, it feels worse, right? Just boost that for now. Get a bit better of a split. I wasn't going to use a Darren, but I feel like because they're using the leader, it's kinda something maybe we want to take care of here, right? Yeah. That's what we'll do. She said. 
It's got to be something like that. We did roll lock a little bit though with this, which is unfortunate. We're losing the one extra point per turn. There's nothing we can really do about it here. I would imagine that they have Ring of Favor. I think we're supposed to just take it. They don't. Okay. It's the two and the four. Okay. So, Mamuna is going to play into either one of these, right? Or one of the Griffins. I feel like that's probably better there. Do that first. No worries. Sins of the flesh are my speciality. So we can give them a six, and we can take a six. Probably the play. We'll bring the back another two. We'll take another four. Now Truffle was placed last round, so we'll go ahead and take it now. And just see if there's maybe a way to get out of this round without losing card. But if they continue to play here, we'll probably just have to take Heatwave. The moon is kind of big. Yeah, we can do it. If I go Mamuna into that, we pull the second one. Your head. <laughs> 
is probably the Kashi. The Karen Thier Kashi play. Or there's that. Sixteen points. I think it's still a heat wave. Let's see if we can get all in. If they're devotion, they might have Auburn. Okay. Let's see here, Sabbath. They still can't do it. Okay. And so we're on blue coin again, and we get Northern <laughs> Nilfgaard double cross. I would imagine they probably... Well, they might have ring. Double Cross has like a lot of other stuff they want to play instead of ring. So it's possible that they don't. But emissaries are also a thing here too. I think we keep spores. Put back one of those. I think we can put back a poison. Or purify. And let's see here. One, two, three... It's not actually bad. If I'm looking at it though, I think that has to go. I just want one more playable card at least. Let's try and get some big points out there, get the pigs online before they can make copies of them and just have like the engine dominance and then maybe just look for a pass. Okay. So it's not what we thought. It's hard to plan for this, like, the meta right now, you never know what you're going to be playing against. Having kept Peller would have just been a really good point swing. So they go for that, prevent the Thrive, I guess. Seventeen. We definitely go with the Pig. We'll just boost this up here. Let it take off. I think we want a heat wave Siri. Good point swing with that. Yeah, I think we take the heat wave here. We'll see what we can pull in round two. It might be a pushing round, it might not be. We've got pretty quick Sabbath here. Okay, so Mamuna's set up. This is set up. At this point, I don't think we need Peller, right? Let's try this. They might think we're not actually playing, you know what I mean? So it might be kind of good. Okay, they take back an eight. Does it work like that? Yeah.
Mamuna is kind of good. I just don't know what they'd really do with it. That's all. Okay. They get a fruit. They get Arandite. Okay, so getting rid of two of them is kind of big. I think that's fine, though. Too bad we don't get this, because we have the one. We still get three points per turn here. Mamuna has nothing. Except for the eight, right? Because this has resilience here... Probably wait. My duty to stick my nose where it doesn't belong. <laughs> Two four. We're just getting such a good return on all these cards, that's why. I think they have spores. I just don't think it's enough. Spores or Vilgeforts? Just because they're boosting the pig, it's like it was planned, you know? Yeah, there it is. Oh. I see. I think they could have done that in one, though, if they took out the pig. Just, like, on the first turn. We should win the game at this point. This kind of slow. I think Spores has to go. We should just be fine. Even though Peller doesn't do a whole lot. Actually. We'll pull a 5 provision. It's all 8s, but maybe we just give him one of these. So, it seems kind of against what the idea is here. But I think we go Toad Prince off the Glynis, and then we go Adarin with the leader, okay? Just because it feels like the only way. Not even co 
they just don't think it's enough, I guess. No retreat, not one step. All right, so we got Skellige Blaze of Glory up here for the last game of the day. Bog should be kind of good, like with Bleeding Effigy, right? Get rid of some of that carryover. I feel like Incubus can go back for now. Probably this. We need like actual cards we can play in the first round. They're probably going to be Devotion, they're probably going to play two Highlands, and then just the typical stuff. It's going to be very difficult for us to get uh, Sabbath here, I think. Just hope that they don't draw a lot of raid cards. Maybe we can get out a big chunk of that stuff in round one. We just keep jamming specials and all that type of stuff, so. Actually, Unicorn could be huge. And that would pull out the Mamuna. Which would then play another self feeder. Like, I'm talking detrimental to like their strategy, right? It also kind of helps us with our tempo. Yeah, there's the Iced. I was thinking Fakusha, but Iced is just as bad. Just thankful that this is out of the way right now, honestly. We're gonna lose some points initially, but we'll get back in this. There we go. I want to get rid of like all that stuff that needs Sabbath, you know? Okay. 23, we click. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Go. <laughs> Reasons for the feeble of heart. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. We don't need to split. Ye who wander on the gale, ye we summon, ye we call. Shit. 
children, elders. We spare none. Realistically, we just go for it, don't we? Taking Peller earlier would have been much better of a Peller, but it just kind of comes down to me just wanting to cram points. Not worrying too much about the tempo. Like, this is one of the issues with Warriors right now. They're going to have to go and use that. Yeah, they'll use the Jutta. Get rid of six, I win the round. Dump one, and we'll dump two, I think. If we summon this, then they can't replay it. We get a five, we take out a nine, still plus four, and the six that we get. Be all right here. I don't think we have to go all in, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play this. Share the night, share the love. Just I don't want them to play Fakusha here, like, that could be a big problem. Okay. Skirtle. Five and six. Must be Fakusha in hand, actually. We play. Definitely play. Just because it forces. Oh. They draw shallow though, so we get card advantage going into round three. And they have to go first. Four is actually so bad. Five and... I think what we're supposed to do is just waste a card and then they play their last card. Which might not be enough. Yeah. And then we just make the points. We'll 
do this one here. And then we'll do this one here, because we need to have the split. Yeah, we're good. There we go. Uninteractive relics. <laughs> 